these social media platforms are integral to our daily lives, forming a channel of communication that enables continuous contact with friends, family and even strangers. It's clear now that we didn't do enough to prevent these tools from being used for harm as well. And that goes for fake But news. in recent years, Facebook's been facing a barrage of questions about what it's doing to stop the spread of misinformation, hatred, extremism and content deemed to be damaging to children. And now those questions have been amplified after thousands of its internal documents have been leaked to the US media. They're being dubbed the Facebook Papers and allege Facebook turned a blind eye to inaccurate content published by celebrities and politicians. Mark Zuckerberg, its CEO, allowed a video claiming abortion is never medically necessary to be published on his platforms. Decisions to take down material were blocked when it was deemed to be harmful to powerful political actors. At the heart of the criticism facing Facebook is an allegation of having a culture that prioritises profit over safety. I would say that profit was the most important and overriding decision in anything that the business was doing, but I don't know why anybody should be surprised by that. How would you describe the culture at Facebook when you were there? I think there are situations in Facebook where the company is now leaning into some of the tropes of the evil megacorp. So, for example, press officer calling me, asking me what I'm going to say when I'm somebody who can speak of my own free volition. I think there's some general uh, concern about some of the tactics that the company is now employing. I do not think Facebook as a whole, as a business, is entirely evil and beyond reproach. But I think there are increasingly some big business tactics being rolled out to try and keep Facebook in the position that it's in. This all comes as the UK government plans to introduce an online safety bill, which will require Facebook and others to remove dangerous content, such as terrorist material or child sex abuse images, or face multi-billion pound fines. Today, the woman behind the leak gave evidence in front of MPs and peers and told them Facebook was unquestionably making hate worse. I think there is a view inside the company that safety is a cost, a cost center, it's not a growth center, which I think is very short term in thinking. Because Facebook's own research has shown that when people have worse integrity experiences on the site, they are less likely to retain. Facebook told us, We've always had the commercial incentive to remove harmful content from our sites. People don't want to see it when they use our apps and advertisers don't want their ads next to it. That's why we've invested $13 billion and hired 40,000 people to do one job keep people safe on our apps. We put out a quarterly report where we actually show our progress and the amount of, of content that we miss in different areas of abuse, everything from hate speech to threats to violence and, inc and incitement. So I would encourage people to look at what the actual facts are and uh, hopefully they can see that this is something that this company prioritizes. But there's a concern among some that regulation will clash with protecting free speech, a core value of democracy. Self-regulation has demonstrably failed. We know that far too often tech firms either fail to make the right choices or fail to enforce their own terms and conditions. So it's right and it's vital that we have external regulation that makes this a clear set of obligations on tech firms uh, to enforce their rules and to ensure that they protect the interests of users. These documents offer the public a very detailed look at the internal workings of the world's largest social media company. They've triggered a debate about Facebook's impact on society and how capitalism could be dictating what we consume on our screens. See me touch there. Well, joining me now is Richard Allen, Lib Dem peer, who was a senior policy boss at Facebook between 2009 and 2019. With me here is Ed Vasey, who was culture minister for six years under David Cameron. But first, let's hear from Sophie Zhang in California. She's a data scientist who worked for Facebook until last year when she blew the whistle on what she called multiple blatant attempts by authoritarian governments to manip manipulate Facebook. She said Facebook's responses were often slapdash and haphazard. So Sophie, um, 
did you see essentially the same as what we've heard there from Francis Haugen in terms of her whistleblower testimony? <laughs> I think but Francis and I have had roughly the similar the same message in that in that Facebook is ultimately a company its goal is to make money and its go and its goal is to its profit over the public good you, you asked at the start of this a question if if Facebook can't root out dangerous anti-social media on its own platforms can anyone I'm going to rephrase that question if Exxon Mobil cannot solve climate change can anyone if Equifax cannot stop credit breaches can anyone because ultimately the, the, we wouldn't expect to ask these sorts of questions, but, but but because of Facebook's PR, we expect a great deal from a company that it isn't willing to provide. So, so you think, Sophie, that, that Facebook, you know, in terms of the question of whether it's unable or unwilling to deal with its role in hate and health problems, from your perspective, it's unwilling. I would say, I would say, I would say so. Yeah. No, I mean, Facebook say that's categorically untrue, that they've invested $13 billion, hired 40,000 people, and they've halved the amount of hate speech on the platform over the past nine months, down to 0.05%. This is a very typical hate Facebook response because they aren't engaging with the actual substance of the question and the allegations because, because both myself and Francis have come up forward with very specific details, very specific statements, and Facebook is choosing to give a broad general answer. And so I'm going to use an analogy that I hope is relatable to, to your listeners. Suppose tomorrow my girlfriend asks me, Sophie, did you wash the dishes last night? And I say, I have washed dishes 150 times in the last year. I have invested $50 in the last year in cleaning products. She would be completely correct to call me out as avoiding the question. Well, okay. Well, let's, face let's, sorry, did you finish, finish your answer? Yeah. But when Facebook does it, that, that's it. We take the word for granted. OK, well, let's bring in Richard Allen, who used to be policy chief uh, at Facebook. I mean, I don't know if you heard the testimony from, well, either from Sophie or from Francis in Parliament today. And do you recognise the company that you used to work for unquestionably making hate worse, quote, uh, which in its own research likened children's engagement with Instagram to addiction and is unwilling to accept even slivers of profit less to deal with these issues? I mean, I don't agree with the characterization of some of the motives of my former colleagues. Uh, I mean, clearly, the company doesn't get everything right, um, but it's actually a company that asks a lot of questions of itself. I mean, a lot of what you're seeing put in the public domain is the company itself choosing to look at the impact of its own products. But why is it not acting then? Why is it not solving those problems? It's got all the resources. The, res the results have just come out. They've made $9 billion of profit in three months, 30 billions of revenue. You could decide to devote billions to this and not to building the next metaverse or whatever Mark Zuckerberg wants to do. And again, the company does act, again, except that mistakes are made, but there's a lot of action that has been taken. I think significantly uh, more than uh, a baseline, you know, the company has gone above and beyond. And, and a lot of these questions are just really, really difficult. If you take one thing that you had in your introduction, uh, the fact that uh, there, there is a, a second review done before you take down a politician's speech or account, well, well, that's because you worry about democracy, not because it's profit-oriented. And in fact, the, this online safety bill... Okay, well, I, can, I can see that there are debates and arguments about democracy and free speech, but okay, let's take the example used in my colleague's report there. The NSPC, 24 online grooming cases a week recorded, said the NSPC, across all of Facebook's apps, three a day. And again, and those are terrible, but I know because I was there when it was developed, that Facebook's gone beyond many of the other companies by actually implementing uh, uh, special technologies that try and detect, for example, when an well, overage they're not working. person... They're not working, are they? they? They work to a certain extent. They're not perfect. They've... People get through the, the net. But if, if you want to say, look, on the internet, if you're going to you know, be on the internet, your kids are going to be on the internet, I feel more confident having them on Facebook's products than, than many other places because Facebook at least is trying, even if it's not perfect. Do you really feel confident Sorry. for your own children so, on Facebook's yeah. products? So if I may interject. Yeah. Uh, I do feel more confident on Facebook products than the wilds of the internet, certainly. So, so, Sophie, 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 do, do, do come in. Yeah. Yes, yes, I would like to interject because, Mr. Annan, I realize that you're defending Facebook, and so I want to be very specific about what I experienced at Facebook. Because when I caught the government of Honduras red handed, it took almost a year for Facebook to take it down. When I caught the government of Azerbaijan red handed, it took more than a year for Facebook to take it down. When I caught an MP in India, a member of the Lok Sabha red handed from the BJP ruling party, we were about to take him down, but then suddenly, when we realized that he was connected at the last minute, Facebook refused. Facebook 
refused to, 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 to even acknowledge that, that, that the question existed and it began ignoring me. So my, so, I, so you have been speaking in generalities, but, uh, but I'm going to confront you on these very specific yeah. cases. It's to, to, to yeah, please explain. I, I, I was involved in, in a lot of those conversations as well. And again, the, the concern is that as soon as you intervene in those kind of sensitive political cases, you've really got to know that you're not going to make things worse. And so I know people were very hesitant often to intervene with politicians, even where there's evidence they were behaving badly. I want, I want to be very clear. If a politician is, if a, the politician is using tens of thousands of fake accounts uh, uh, run by the government, paid by the government, uh, run by governmental employees to mislead people online, mis to, to repress their own citizenry and harass the opposition, and the proposal is to remove the fake accounts and leave the politicians alone, how is that in any way possible a difficult conversation? Even at Facebook, no one was defending this activity. I would agree that it was terrible. And I, I cannot believe right, that right now you are defending in this activity. It, it's a terrible activity, but I say, uh, uh, at the same time, what you don't want to do is blunder in and end up carrying out actions okay. that then end up well, seeming as though the company is now taking sides in a political context. Okay, so let, let's, let, let's bring in Ed, Ed, Ed Vasey. I mean, so there are issues of free speech around here, there are issues, issues of politics, but you know, just, just, just take the issue of child health, mental health, the NSPC statistics that you've just heard. On that basis alone, I mean, try and park the idea that this is a digital product. Any other product that led to some of these outcomes, you know, their executives would be in court fearing jail. Well, uh, the question here is, you know, should you regulate big tech? And the answer is obviously yes. And ironically, all the people participating in this discussion do agree with that. And I do not take the line that you just have to bash Facebook over the head because I acknowledge that for many, many people, Facebook is an incredibly useful tool. You can talk to millions of small businesses in the UK whose businesses depend on Facebook as a platform. But the idea that this should be completely unregulated is nonsense. Uh, and in fact, in terms of you know how quickly Facebook takes stuff down, you are going to have a lot of MPs legislating on tech regulation who regularly face abuse and death threats. And when they try and get redress from the social media companies, uh, they are shouting into the void and these are the people who are going to regulate them so they haven't been dealt with very well by the social media companies and everybody agrees that there should be a form of regulation i think one has to acknowledge that it's pioneering legislation certainly in the uk i think we are leading the way but europe is not far behind australia is actually slightly ahead it is all coming together it will not be perfect but it is long overdue leading the way but it's been years that the it has been it has been years turn the online safety bill. absolutely TikTok didn't exist when we started talking about absolutely this, and now and it does I, I was the, <laughs> i got sacked six <laughs> years ago as a minister and i was talking about it then so and how why has it taken so long it, 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 and the age, harms age, are very, do you acknowledge the harms are very real i mean particularly yes, children mental uh, health. an age verification uh, fell by the wayside when we were meant to do that Two or three. Well, when you say fell by the wayside, ago, like it's some sort of accident. What, what went Well, wrong? I wasn't a minister. Okay. Then. I, I wish it had happened, but uh, I don't know why it went isn't, wrong. Isn't it the truth? I you are a member of the Conservative the key, Party. The, you know? the key point is to get the online safety bill uh, as good as it can be. But That's it, why we're I having free legislative Lord scrutiny. Lazy. And it's also qu quite right. There will be a vigorous debate about it because you do because have because you're caught between free speech exactly. and this issue of exactly. a hard line, but also this issue of wanting to tempt companies, big tech giants from the West Coast, to post Brexit Britain as well, and, and so being a little lenient on them. Isn't that the reality of the situation of our country in this debate? I genuinely don't think that's the case. There is some uh, apparently debate about whether the criminal sanctions on directors of tech companies should be brought in now or left for regulation what, what in the future. Think? I think they should be brought in now because I think Parliament should debate them and decide that now, not leave it to future governments to bring in that regulation. I don't think it's linked to whether or not tech companies will invest. I think they will invest come what may, because the UK is a brilliant country for those companies to invest in. I think they're crying wolf about that particular issue. I think that there will be a big, big debate about free speech because our regulation goes further than most in taking this issue of legal but harmful. I, if I'm rude to you, yeah. but I somehow cause you psychological harm, even though what I'm saying is perfectly legal, yeah. Uh, I can be caught by this legislation. I think there will be a genuine and I think important debate about how far this regulation should go. But be in no doubt this regulation is needed. We've seen because of the tragic death of David Amos, it has moved up the agenda. You yeah. saw Boris Johnson it's question take a year about it. 2022, we think. It will take a year. It will probably take two years. Two years. Okay. Well, okay. Let's take a step back a, a minute. You know, I think for people watching at home who are parents, they're wondering, they're seeing these testimonies and they're wondering, you know, should I, what should I do about my children who are on these 
on these uh, well, uh, let platforms. Me well, let me tell what you, would you do? Let, well, what let me give you one me? piece of what good. Are you doing? Let me give you Faisal one piece of good news, which is this government and this country has brought in the age appropriate design code. It doesn't trip off the tongue. It's yes. managed by the Information Commissioner's well, Office. That was a few years ago, and it, that, that, it that, that is worked. now live. I spoke to the Information Commissioner's Office today about it, and they say that a lot of the social media companies are already changing their behaviour, they're not only adhering to the letter of the law, they're adhering to the spirit of the law. Okay. Regulation moves these companies, and that's why it's so important. Let me bring Sophie and Richard on this issue. It was very telling, I thought, that in Francis's testimony, she said that the children of tech executives were basically banned from using social media at their schools. Doesn't that tell it all? Sophie. I think that's a very strong statement. Just, I, I don't, I can't personally attest to its veracity, but I would compare it to, for instance, cigarette e executives who insisted that their products were not addictive and did not cause and were safe to consume, but at the same time banned their children from smoking. And so, to me, that I cannot. Uh, that is a very strong statement. Okay, and so, and so, and so, Richard, you said it already. You think that these products are safe. Do you not fear, though, you're on the end, your former company on the end of a an rather epic backlash? Even President Biden, although he retracted the statement, suggested that on anti-vax propaganda, as he saw it, that um, uh, Facebook was killing people. I mean, I agree with Ed that it is time for regulations. Again, just to be very clear, I, I don't agree with the characterization of some of the past decisions, but I do agree that now is the time for regulation. These big decisions should Proper be shared. state regulation, not self-regulation. Well, no, no, regulation by Ofcom. Ofcom is an excellent regulator. Uh, if it has a chair of the statute, somebody like Ed Vasey, it'll be even better, which is a, a prospect, as I understand. You know, it's a great regulator. I think it'll do a great job. I think we will get better decisions made when the companies are disclosing all of this information we've now seen leaked to a regulator and they have a grown-up conversation about how to make things better. Regulators working with companies is what is good for us, good for our kids, good for society. Well, I must leave that there. Thank you very much, Sophie Zhang, Richard Allen and uh, Ed Vasey here in the studio. And we obviously must say that um, Facebook uh, denied uh, the allegations of the whistleblower in Parliament uh, uh, today. Now.